Ask the Mayor with Melanie Keebler, only on News Channel 21. We're joined this morning by Ben Mayor Melanie Keebler for our monthly Ask the Mayor segment. Good morning, Mayor Keebler. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. So let's start with a question about school safety zones. Who decides where the flashing lights go? So that is up to the city. We have about 100 school safety zones in the city, and our transportation department worked with our police, actually, to identify some of the places where we thought it would be most useful to have the flashers. Otherwise, they're just plain signs. Um, so in 36 of our 60 school zone signs on arterial and collector streets, streets, we have flashing lights, and we are looking for more funding to help um, create more of those. Great. An Another safety concern involves e-bikes. A viewer wonders if plans are in the works to change laws. Yes, so this has been spearheaded by our representative Emerson Levy in the state legislature, and she is working on updating our laws, which are pretty outdated. They haven't been updated um, since the boom of e-bikes has begun. So I think we're looking at a proposal to match up the laws to the three classes of e-bikes and to talk about which kind of e-bikes um, kids can ride, and that will be happening in the upcoming legislative session. Great. Well, next, a viewer asks about keeping Ben beautiful. What's being done for green development and preserving native plants? Right. Of course, um, we all want to keep Ben beautiful. And one of the things the city does ourselves, whenever we are doing um, new roundabouts and new, new projects in the right of way, we're putting in plants that are those water-wise, um, low water using plants. We're also looking right now at maybe developing some policy about what people do in their strips on the, on the street and encouraging and seeing if there's ways to have new development, um, not do lawns, but do plants instead and encourage people to do that so that we get more opportunities for those native plants and low water plants. Awesome. Staying with environmental concerns, our next submission asks, why aren't there solar panels on any of the government buildings or recreation buildings like Larkspur or Juniper? We actually do have solar panels on a lot of the city buildings. So I'm checking my notes here. The water filtration facility, our parking garage downtown, our wells on Aubrey Butte, and the reservoir near Hillside Park all have solar panels. And our new public works building in Juniper Ridge is going to be all electric and also have solar panels. Um, for the other buildings you see around town, so Juniper and Larkspur are the parks or our school buildings, um, you need to talk to those, those leaders in those districts about getting solar panels installed there. But at the city, we're really trying to make sure that's part of our buildings. OK, great. As in past months, many viewers asked about the city's issue with the homeless. This viewer focuses on China Hat Road, asking how you're going to work with the Forest Service to enforce camping limits. Really great question. And, you know, first I want to say, you know, for any public safety um, problems that are happening out in those areas, we're really grateful to our law enforcement partners who will respond and who will try to um, help with those issues. As far as about the people camping there, when we're talking about national lands, forest service lands, there are different rules, and, and that is very frustrating that there's different rules in different parts of our region. What we have been doing through the Coordinated Houseless Response Office is trying to convene all those people that own public lands where people are camping, try to figure out where is a place that we can make for people to go? Because number one, if we want to move people, they have to have somewhere else to go. So I'm really encouraged by that work of all the public agencies, including the Forest Service, saying here's some places that might be viable. And the next step is to find a service provider to take a look at those places and see where they might be able to run a managed outdoor shelter. Once we get those resources going, we have more options to help people to move. Um, and there are also some things we want to talk about with the Forest Service about just making it cleaner and having better access for safety and all of that for the people who are staying out there so more to come but continuing to try to be a partner with the Forest Service great well growth is all another common concern for viewers sending questions can you address the city's plan and whether it accounts for more affordable housing absolutely so the thing about Oregon land use law is that we are required to plan for growth so we have to constantly be thinking about the numbers of population that are going to increase here and then plan for that housing and there are some new laws coming into effect in uh, the next year called the Oregon housing needs analysis law where the state is actually going to give us some numbers and say here's the housing we think you need to build and then our job is to look at can we build that inside our current boundary do we need to expand to accommodate more housing and how do we get that mix of not just one type of housing but housing for all people, including affordable housing. So it's definitely part of our growth. We have a whole growth management department that this is their job to work on this. Um, and there'll be more to come for the public to learn more uh, next year, especially. 
Awesome, good to hear. And with this growth, there's been several important road projects. Can you offer any updates for the current major projects? Yes, very excited that Neff and Purcell is open. Opened on Monday of this week. That was a long project where uh, if anyone's ever renovated an old house, you open the walls and you find a bunch of stuff you didn't think was there. That's what, the, that's what happened and that's why there were some delays, but really happy to see that open. Wilson is another big one that we're moving to finish. Um, there's gonna be some activity right on 3rd Street as we um, improve that intersection and that'll be finished next year. The other big one people are going to see is in the north, up, up in this area, the north corridor that ODOT's working on with the realignment of the parkway. That's going to have some um, delays and, and be under construction for a while. So those are the biggest ones going on right now. Measure 110 regulating drugs in the state has been criticized by local leaders. Where do you stand for the, on the call for changes? I think what we are seeing and hearing across the state is um, a reaction to the public crisis of addiction that we're experiencing here. And that only got worse when fentanyl arrived on the West Coast. So as far as Measure 110, you know, I think what voters wanted, they wanted to see um, an approach that really got people into treatment. And I think there have been some public safety consequences that um, maybe weren't fully realized when that, when that ballot measure passed. So I do support some reforms of Measure 110. There is um, an 11-point plan that's been put forward by the um, Sheriff's Association, the Sh Police Chiefs Association, and the League of Cities. I think it's a really good starting point. And what's important about that is it's not just talking about public safety and maybe um, having some more criminal justice involved ways to get people into treatment. It's also continuing f to fund those treatment and diversion programs. You can't have one without the other. So. I think we, I'm hoping the legislature will lead on some reforms that will help us to make our streets safer, but also we'll get more people into treatment because you need to have both. And Mira, as we close the segment, I know you had a few thoughts you wanted to share for the holiday season. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to say to all of Bend, um, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, um, just happy holidays, however you celebrate. I hope everyone has a safe and really restful holiday break with your families. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming in. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. And we will have more questions that you can submit in the second Wednesday in January for another Ask the Mayor segment. Remember, you can submit your questions anytime at ktvz.com.